All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2023 annual meeting of stockholders of Philippine Realty and Holdings Corporation. Allow me to call the Corporate Secretary, Attorney Rex P. Bonifacio, to do the honor of introducing the members of the Board of Directors. Thank you. Joining us in this meeting through a live, live webcast are the following. Mr. Gerardo Domenico Antonio V. Lanusa. Mr. Lanusa is the Chairman of the Board and President, and at the same time, the Chairman of the Executive Committee. He is also a member of the Procurement Committee and Retirement Plan Committee. Mr. Renato G. Nunez. Mr. Nunez is the Vice Chairman of the Board and an Independent Director. He is also the Chairman of the Audit Committee. Mr. Nunez, likewise a member of the Executive Committee, Corporate Governance Nominations Committee, Board Risk Oversight Committee, and Related Party Transaction Committee. Mr. Gerardo O. Lanusa, Jr. Mr. Lanusa is the Chairman Emeritus and member of the Executive Committee and Procurement Committee. Mr. Antonio O. Olbes. Mr. Olbes is the Vice Chairman Emeritus. Mr. Edmundo C. Medrano. Mr. Medrano is the Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, and Treasurer of the company. He is also a member of the, of the Retirement Plan Committee, Management Committee, and Project Committee. Mr. Gregory G. Young. Mr. Young is a member of the Board Risk Oversight Committee. Mr. Amador C. Bacani. Mr. Bakani is a member of the Executive Committee, Audit Committee, Related Party Transaction Committee, and Retirement Plan Committee. Mr. Andrew C. Nang. Mr. Nang is the Chairman of the Procurement Committee. Mr. Alfonso Martin E. Esmendi. Mr. Esmendi is an Independent Director and Chairman of the Corporate Governance and Nominations Committee and Related Party Transaction Committee. He is also a member of the Audit Committee and the Board Risk Oversight Committee. Mr. Joe Mark O. Arulado. Mr. Arulado is an Independent Director and Chairman of the Board Risk Oversight Committee. He is also a member of the Corporate Governance and Nominations Committee, Board Risk Oversight Committee, and Related Party Transaction Committee. Also joining us today is Ms. Chiara Rosaro Julia V. Lanusa Paredes. Ms. Paredes is a stockholder of Philippine Realty and Holdings Corporation and a nominee for the Board of Directors. She is also the Vice President of Sultan's Power Incorporated and a member of the Board of Directors of Recon X Energy Corporation. We also recognize the presence of the key officers of the company and guests. And now to preside over this meeting at Quezon City, our Chairman and President, Mr. Gerardo Domenico Antonio Villanusa. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The meeting will now come to order. Mr. Corporate Secretary, have notices been duly sent as required by the bylaws? Yes, Mr. Chairman. A copy of the notice of today's meeting was published in print and online format in Business Mirror and Business World on June 8 and June 9, 2023, respectively, in compliance with the notice dated April 20, 2020, by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Mr. Corporate Secretary, do we have a quorum? Yes, Mr. Chairman. There are present in this meeting shareholders owning 8,015,449,639 shares, representing 88.09% of 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares of the corporation as of record date, March 31, 2023. Therefore, there is a quorum and this meeting may proceed. Our Corporate Secretary, Attorney Bonifacio, will now share the rules of conduct for this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The rules of conduct for this meeting are set forth in the definitive information statement. I would just like to highlight some points to our shareholders who are joining us today. 
Number one, stockholders who have registered and voted on or before the deadline as provided in the definitive information statement and notice of stockholders' meeting shall be considered for purposes of determining the quorum. All questions, comments, or clarifications shall be addressed to the chairman of the meeting and shall be entertained, read, and responded to during the question and answer or after the other matter. The moderator of the meeting shall read the questions which shall be responded to by whoever the chairman of the meeting may appoint or designate from the members of the board or officers of the corporation. Stockholders may send their questions, comments, or clarification on matters related to the items in the agenda through the comment section found in the Zoom link. The company will endeavor to answer all questions, all queries not answered during the question and answer, for whatever reason will be responded to by an email. The meeting is being recorded in compliance with the guidelines for online meeting issued by the SEC and by joining our live webcast, stockholders are deemed to have given their consent thereto. And lastly, in compliance with the revised corporation code of the Philippines, I will be reporting the voting results after the discussion of each item on the agenda, and the same shall be reflected in the minutes of this meeting. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Attorney. Um, the first item on the agenda is the reading and approval of the minutes of the last annual stockholders meeting held on June 30, 2022. A copy of the minutes of last year's annual meeting is posted on the company's website. Are there any comments on the minutes? There being none, the chair will now entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I respectfully move that the reading of the minutes of the annual stockholders meeting held on June 30, 2022 be dispensed with and that the same be approved and ratified as recorded. I'm Camille Delphine, a proxy holder. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. I am John Mark Aguilar, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that the reading of the minutes of the last annual stockholders meeting of the corporation held on June 30, 2022 be dispensed with and at the same and that the same be approved and ratified as recorded. Mr. Corporate Secretary, may we know the voting results for this item on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, shareholders owning 8,015,449,696 shares, representing 88.09% of 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented in this meeting, voted in favor of the approval ratification and confirmation of the minutes of the last stockholders meeting held on June 30, 2022. Are there any objections? There being none, <coughs> the vote is carried. The next item on the agenda is the presentation of the annual report of the Board of Directors. The year 2022 held a lot of promise as COVID, as COVID-19 restrictions and regulations became more loose allowing mobility and better interaction for both people and businesses. Naturally, there were still challenges in adapting to our seemingly ever-changing environment, but your company remains steadfast in its commitment to deliver value to all of its stakeholders. Let me now call on our Executive Vice President, COO, and Treasurer, Mr. Ed Medrano, to present to us the financial and operational highlights of 2022, as well as an overview of what's in store for 2023. Um, good afternoon to everyone joining us in this virtual meeting. To our stockholders, members of the Board of Directors, my colleagues at Field Realty, and guests, thank you for attending. Well, at this time of the year, uh, we hold this annual gathering to inform you of the various activities, successes, and challenges that your company has undertaken and has overcome in 2022. There were several factors that came into play that contributed to the performance of your company. And one important aspect is the condition of the real estate industry as a whole. Allow me to give you a quick overview before I delve into the specifics of Field Realty's performance in 2022. 
The first half of 2022 saw the gradual improvement of real estate in the metro. Office leasing volumes continued to accelerate, resulting in lower vacancy levels despite new supply. The retail market recorded more store openings than store closures, which drove vacancy rates downward. Residential sales continued to move sideways, with the pre-selling segment gaining traction while hotel occupancy normalized with the usual lean season. It is apparent that this uh, positive trajectory continued for the rest of 2022, as based on reports released early this year. The real estate sector in the Philippines has generated a gross value added of 536.4 billion pesos, an increase of more than 9% compared to the previous year. Overall, the value added from real estate has steadily increased over the past few years, as you can see in this graph. Specific to our segment, the Philippines uh, luxury real estate market has also seen resilient and consistent performance in the past few years. Several property firms have shared the observation that the segment has remained steady as high net worth individuals renovate units in the major central business, business districts or CBDs with expectations of higher returns. Real property consultants noted that luxury village land values and luxury condominium prices continue to increase in spite of the 18 months of lockdowns. In fact, uh, capital market, uh, capital values for luxury projects have continued to grow despite the economic downturn, which shows the strong capital preservation of these assets. In particular, Collier's Philippines said that mid-income and upscale residential units continue to dictate the launches and take-up of condominium units in Metro Manila. The outlook highlighted that during the first quarter of 2022, Taguig, compared to Makati and Pasig CBDs, exhibited the largest increase in leads for residential rentals, which belong to the upscale and luxury segments. It is seen that this trend may be influenced by returning expats and C-level executives amid an improving business environment. With the upward trajectory of the real estate sector, your company was able to capitalize on the opportunities in 2022, as shown in the following slides on the financial performance of Peel Realty for 2022. Our sales in real estate had a significant increase from 153.8 mil million pesos in 2021 to 225 million pesos in 2022, up by 71.2 million pesos. This is a large 46% increase in our performance for our core offering, which is the sale of properties. Recording However, in progress. As can be seen here, revenues generated from rent, management fees, interest gains, and revaluation of investment properties was 97.9 million less compared to 2021. Rent and, ad, rent and commissions are slightly up, but the decrease in the other revenue figures resulted in a decrease in the, operate, in the overall earnings generated from these sources. As a result, our total revenues for 2022 ended at 873.3 million, which is 3% lower than 2021. Nevertheless, with the combined effects of higher real estate sales and a much lower level of cost and expenses, your company posted a total income before tax of more than 305 million pesos, up by 53.1 million pesos or a 20% increase compared to 252.4 million pesos the previous year. However, the consolidated net income after tax was down by 6.4% in 2022, in spite of higher total income before tax. This was mainly because we enjoyed huge one-time tax benefit adjustments in 2021 when the CREATE Act was implemented. 
our total assets increased from 2021 to 2022, jumping from 8.23 billion to 8.59 billion pesos or a 4% increase. We are happy to report that your company's network grew by 3% in 2022 with an increase of 197.5 million pesos. Our per share earnings remained steady at 2 centavos unchanged compared to 2021. Our book value per share increased from 71 centavos in 2021 to 73 centavos in 2022. Your company's debt to equity ratio slightly increased, closing at 0.32 is to 1, but still a very good and conservative financial leverage ratio. The company has managed to maintain a consistent balance between its debt and its equity positions over the years. Meanwhile, uh, Phil Realty's current ratio decreased from 5.31 is to 1 to 3.61 is to 1, but still a very, very comfortable liquidity ratio. Moreover, our price per share has also remained constant for the past two years, closing at 21 centavos on December 31, 2022. Overall, we believe that all things considered, even with the pandemic still ongoing and as economic challenges prevailed last year, your company was able to maximize opportunities and perform well. Moving forward, here are the updates on your company's projects. Our most promising project yet is on the horizon. An ultra-luxury residential property will rise in the metro's booming central district business district, Bonifacio Global City. This tower will bear Phil Realty's signature features of space and privacy and will truly be a distinct addition to our portfolio. Meanwhile, in New Manila's most elegant address, our one Balete compound will see the addition of new luxury residential towers, upholding the company's legacy of providing spacious li living, in intimate communities for multi-generational families. And in our landmark project in the Ortigas Central Business District, the Tech Thai Towers continue to offer leasable inventories to service the office sector, especially with the reopening of businesses and companies and their return to pre-pandemic ways of working. On the hospitality front, El Retiro is a luxury vacation home in Baguio City, catering to vacationers in the high-end segment. The mid-century mansion is situated on a 1.6-hectare property surrounded by a lush pine forest with stunning mountain views. El Retiro offers guests privacy and exclusivity and is reserved for a single group. El Retiro also serves as the ideal venue for family reunions, birthdays, weddings, and other grand celebrations. Lastly, the Icon Showroom, also located in BGC, has successfully positioned itself as a premium spot with lessees that mirror our high-end luxury market positioning. The commercial establishments includes high-end restaurants such as the Indus and Unwind, real foods, a go-to grocery for the health conscious, and Katz Motors, the authorized dealer of luxury vehicles in the Philippines. These developments by your company promise a bright future ahead, despite current global events slowing down the economic recovery process, experts believe that many industrial sectors can look forward to more positive circumstances in the near future, including and especially the real estate sector where we belong. According to reports and studies, the real estate industry in particular should look forward to a steady recovery in 2023 and much better progress in the years to come. This year, the Philippines is again expected to grow by 6.3%, one of the highest growth rates in the region. With this fearless forecast, you can trust that your company will take advantage of this upward trend. The real estate market is dynamic and ever-evolving, but our ability to adapt, embrace change, 
and seize opportunities has been key to our resilience. Together, we have navigated uncertainties and emerged stronger, reaffirming our position in the luxury segment. Looking ahead, we are excited about the possibilities that lie before us. Our strategic roadmap is designed to further expand our market presence, leverage emerging technologies, and deliver unparalleled experience to our valued clients. We remain steadfast in our commitment to innovation, sustainability, and delivering exceptional value to our shareholders. In closing, I would like to express my sincere gr gratitude to our stockholders for their unwavering support and trust in your company. We are privileged to have such a remarkable community of investors who share our passion and believe in our vision. Together, we will continue to shape the future of the real estate industry and create lasting value for everyone. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, uh, Ed. The chair will now entertain a motion for the approval of the annual report and the audited financial statements for the year ended 2022. Mr. Chairman, I move that the annual report and the audited financial statements for the year ended 2022 be approved, ratified, and confirmed. I am Parliament Admiral Kosovo. Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. I'm Gerald Katakutan, proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that the annual report and audited financial statements for the year ended 2022 be approved, ratified, and confirmed. Mr. Corporate Secretary, may we know the voting results for this item on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, shareholders owning 8,015,449,696 shares, representing 88.09% of 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the approval of the annual report and the audited financial statements for the year ended 2022. Are there any objections? The chair hears none. The motion is carried. We come now to the election of the directors of directors for the 23, 2023 to 2024 term. 11 seats on the board are available to be filled. May I know from the Corporate Secretary the list of nominees for the election as members of the Board of Directors for 2023 to 2024 term. The following individuals were nominated for election as members of the Board of Directors for 2023-2024 term. They were qualified by the Corporate Governance and Nominations Committee of the Corporation. Each nominee, if elected, will serve as a director for one year beginning today until his or her successor is duly elected and qualified in accordance with the bylaws of the corporations. Mr. Gerardo O. Lanusa, Jr. Mr. Antonio O. Olbes. Mr. Gerardo Domenico Antonio V. Lanusa. Mr. Edmundo C. Medrano. Mr. Gregory G. Young. Mr. Andrew C. Nam. Mr. Amador C. Bacani. And Ms. Chiara Rosario Julia V. Lanusa Paredes. And for our independent directors, we have Mr. Renato G. Nunez, Mr. Joe Mark O. Arulado, and Mr. Alfonso Martin E. Esmendi. The names of the nominees and their qualifications are provided in the definitive information statement submitted by the corporation to the SEC. Mr. Chairman, I move that all the nominees for members of the Board of Directors be declared as duly elected directors of the corporation to serve as such for one year beginning today until their successors are duly elected and qualified. I am John Mark Abuyan, a proxy holder. I second the motion. I am Camille Delphine, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that all the nominees be declared as duly elected directors of the corporation to serve as such for one year beginning today until their successors are duly elected and qualified in accordance with the bylaws of the corporation. Are there any objections? 
The chair hears none. The motion is carried. There being enough seats on the board to be filled up by the 11 nominees, the following are elected as directors of the corporation to serve for one year term. Gerardo Domenico V. Lanuza, Gerardo O. Lanuza Jr., Antonio O. Albes, Edmundo C. Medrano, Gregory G. Yang, Andrew C. Nang, Amador C. Bacani, Chiara Rosario Julia Lanuza Paredes. And independent directors, namely Renato G. Nunez, Joe Mark O. Araliado, and Alfonso Martin E. Asmendi. The corporate secretary is directed to apply the votes received in favor of the 11 nominees who are all deemed duly elected members of the Board of Directors of Philippine Realty and Holdings Corporation. Yes, Mr. Chairman, all votes cast and received by the corporation stock and transfer agent have been applied. Each of the 11 nominees has received 8,015,449,696 votes representing 88.09% of the 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented in this meeting. On behalf of the members of the previous board of directors, allow me to express our gratitude for the trust and confidence that the stockholders have reposed in us. Thank you. We shall now proceed with the ratification of all acts and proceedings of the Board of Directors, Board Committees, and Officers since the last annual stockholders meeting held on June 30, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I move that all acts, resolutions, contracts, deeds, and proceedings of the Board of Directors, Board Committees, and Officers of the Corporations since the last annual stockholders meeting held on June 30, 2022, and up to today's meeting, as set forth or reported in the minutes of the meetings of the Board of Directors and its committees and the report submitted by the corporation to the SEC, PSE, and other regulatory bodies and all acts and proceedings performed or taken pursuant thereto be approved, ratified, and confirmed. I am Gerald Kataputan, a proxy holder. I second the motion. I am Parame Almarod, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that all acts, contracts, deeds, and proceedings of the Board of Directors, Board Committees, and Officers of the Corporation since the last annual stockholders meeting and up to today's meeting as set forth or reported in the minutes of the meetings of the Board of Directors and its committees and the reports submitted by the Corporation to the SEC, PSE, and other regulatory bodies and all acts and proceedings performed or taken pursuant thereto be approved, ratified, and unconfirmed. Mr. Corporate Secretary, may we know the voting results for this item on the agenda? Uh, Mr. Chairman, shareholders owning 8,015,449,696 shares, representing 88.09% of the 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented in this meeting, voted in favor of the approval and ratification of all acts, contracts, deeds, and proceedings of the Board of Directors, Board Committees, and Officers of the Corporation since the last annual stockholders meeting and up to today's meeting. Are there any objections? There being none, the motion is carried. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the amendments to the bylaws of the corporation. Mr. Corporate Secretary, will you please enlighten our shareholders on this item in the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The amendments to the bylaws pertain to Section 3 of Article 3, removing the position of Chief Executive Officer and defining the role of the President. The amendments were discussed and unanimous, unanimously approved by the Board of Directors during its regular meeting held on February 21, 2023. The full text of the said amendments and explanation are provided in the definitive information statement and included in the notice of stockholders meeting submitted by the corporation to the SEC. That is all, Mr. Chairman. The chair will now entertain a motion for the approval of the amendments to the bylaws of the corporation. 
Mr. Chairman, I move that the amendments to Section 3 of Article 3 of the Bylaws of the Corporation, as recorded in the minutes of the board meeting held on February 21, 2023, and all resolutions, actions, or proceedings taken by the board of directors and or officers of the corporation pursuant thereto be approved, ratified, and confirmed. I'm John Mark Apuyan, a proxy holder. I second the motion. I am Camille Delphine, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that the amendments of to Section 3 of Article 3 of the Bylaws of the Corporation as recorded in the minutes of the board meeting held on February 21, 2023, and all resolutions, actions, or proceedings taken by the board of directors and or officers of the corporation pursuant thereto be approved, ratified, and confirmed. Mr. Corporate Secretary, may we have the voting results for this item on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to report that shareholders owning a billion. 15,449,696 shares representing 88.09% of the 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented this meeting voted in favor of the approval of the amendments to Section 3 of Article 3 of the Bylaws of the Corporation. I therefore certify that the majority vote requirement under Section 47 Title 5 of the Revised Corporation has been met for this item in the agenda. Are there any objections? There being none, the motion is carried. The next item on our agenda is the appointment of an external auditor for the corporation uh, for the year 2023. Mr. Chairman, I respectfully move that the Seda Valencia and Company be appointed as external auditor of the corporation for the year 2023, subject to such terms and conditions as may be imposed subsequently by the board of directors. I am Carla May Almarol, a proxy holder. I second the motion. I am Gerald Katakutan, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that Maceda Valencia and, and company be appointed as the external auditor of the corporation for the ensuing year, subject to such terms and conditions as may be imposed subsequently by the Board of Directors. Mr. Corporate Secretary, may we have the voting results from that, this item of the agenda? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, shareholders owning uh, 8,015,449,696 shares representing 88.09% of the 9,100,102,685 total outstanding shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the appointment of Maceda, Valencia, and Company as the external auditor of the corporation for the year 2022, subject to such terms and conditions as may be imposed subsequently by the Board of Directors. Are there any objections? There being none, the motion is carried. Uh, Mr. Corporate Secretary, are there other matters that require consideration by the shareholders? There are none, Mr. Chairman. There being none, we can now address the questions, comments, and clarifications from the stockholders. Our senior manager and business development officer, Mr. Rosano Santos, will read the questions, comments, or clarifications together with the names of the stockholders who sent them. Mr. Chairman, we have a question from Mr. Jose Maria Francisco's proxy. The question reads, what is the company's strategy for sustaining growth in the luxury real estate market considering the current economic and regulatory environment? May I ask Mr. Medrana to answer the question? Uh, good afternoon. Well, the key to your company's success has always been its commitment to stay true to its DNA. As luxury and premium real estate developer, we have always put priority in complementing the lifestyle of our distinctive clients and offering them unparalleled living experience. With this, our strategy can be summed up in three points. First, uh, continue to target affluent local and international buyers, ensuring that our marketing and sales efforts are tailor fit for them. Number two, continue to offer unique and exclusive amenities as well as architectural and design excellence in our developments. 
And number three, continue to provide exceptional service. All right. Thank you, Mr. Medrano, for bringing light to the matter. Mr. Chairman, we have no more questions. There being no other questions from stockholders, the chair will now entertain a motion for adjournment. Mr. Chairman, I move that the meeting is adjourned. I am Camille Delphine, a proxy holder. I second the motion. I am John Mark Abuya, a proxy holder. It has been moved and seconded that the meeting be adjourned. Are there any objections? If there being none, uh, the meeting is adjourned. So there will be a link. Uh, there will be a link posted to the recorded meeting on our website at www.philrealty.com.ph. Stockholders may raise any issues, clarifications, and concerns during the meeting conducted by sending an email to corporate secretary at philrealty.com.ph. Thank you for joining us. All right. So once again, on behalf of Philippine Realty and Holdings Corporation, we would like to thank our newly elected board of directors, key officers of the company, stockholders and guests who have joined us today in Philippine Realty and Holdings Corporation 2023 Annual Stockholders Meeting. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you.